I don't know about you, but I'd like that to go for another 20 seconds. Because we know from first, because we know from first year economics, you can never have enough choice. One of the aims of the Australian Consumer Data Right is to help consumers make informed decisions and to reduce the paradox of choice, a situation where consumers are paralysed with too many options. A key issue we flagged here in the UK open banking website is it appears to be increasing the paradox of choice. We believe that a complete replication of this website may cause more harm than good. Having more services without context will increase the paradox of choice. This creates a need to address the absence of government and provide facilitation between these three parties. We're here to propose a new way of looking at the current open banking structure. We believe that the government should play a central role in the open banking process. As you can see in this figure, the government has been tasked to help facilitate the secure flow of information between the banking sector, registered third parties and the consumer. The logic behind this is to create a more direct line for consumers in terms of viewing and managing their data. One of the key issues around open banking is awareness. A survey in the United Kingdom found that only 28% of British people were actually aware that open banking even existed. How can we make sure this result does it happen in Australia? Our idea is to leverage the use of framing within the individual tax assessment form. As we know, at tax time, eight out of 10 Australians receive a tax refund. We can also assume that individuals have been primed by the tax return in a positive or negative way. We can also assume that individuals, as you can see, we're providing two versions of a letter. By using the tax assessment form, we can grab more of the general public and nudge them into being aware that they could benefit by increased savings or decreasing the current expenses. So this is our dashboard concept. Um, we're just allowing for people to enter their name so it can be your dashboard. Um, so the behavioural insights we're hoping to leverage with this is um, the paradox of choice, loss aversion and the endowment effect. So we believe that there is a need for customers to be able to see their data and transactions in a much more tangible way. So this logic explains why we believe the government can provide a platform for individuals to view, engage and manage their data. So just a few features. They can have links to view their current data and their history, links to manage their preference or goals, such as preference for frequent flyer points, um, links to their current data that they're sharing and how long they're sharing it for and who with. So we really want to address the paradox of choice. So we allow customers to edit and manage the accredited services that have been recommended for them and the, profits that those, uh, the products that those services are offering. So through those settings and permissions, consumers can customise the services they are being offered based on things that they deem important. So once consumers feel a genuine sense of ownership in their data and have a perceived endowment, we believe that this will encourage them to engage with it further. So data sharing and engagement. So we've observed that people are willing to share a lot of their data on social media platforms and somehow are reluctant to share a similar level of data with financial service providers or government. So this inconsistent attitude towards data sharing can be explained by how these options are framed. In a social media setting, platforms are set up in such a way that customers have full control of their data and this creates a feeling of ownership, agency and a perceived endowment. On the other hand, most current comparison services require high levels of data input without allowing customers to really view, utilize or manage that data, which can lead to a feeling of loss. So framing the individual's open banking data in such a way that allows them agency over what they share, who they share it with, and by adding these extra privacy protocols and settings, we can help remove this loss and help people say that their data is an asset that can work for them. As we've heard in the last couple of days, Consumers generally feel that they don't understand what they're consenting to in terms and conditions or the privacy implications of sharing their data. We propose implementing a series of classification for the registered providers similar to that used for film, literature and video games. A ranking from A to E could be given based on risk factors such as which data they require access to, the minimum period of access required for the services functionality, 
and additional risk, risk factors such as whether the data may be on sold, whether it remains in the consumer data rights system or is transferred out. This provides an easy visual cue that consumers uh, will recognise and summarises the information without them having to invest in reading the entire terms and conditions. It also nudges the service providers because with this clearer information providing informed consent, they can realise that they need to communicate to customers if they're in a high risk category why these permissions are necessary and we propose that these in this category do this with a short video for their terms and conditions. Once a consumer has decided to share their data with a service provider, they can decide on a scale from the minimum time required for this particular service or until further notice on a slider that defaults to zero, indicating their active consent. As Robin's mentioned, these permissions are available on the dashboard and consent can be removed at any time, not just to the one they've pre-selected. Um, limited information is a barrier to switching and we, face, we all face uh, limited information. So um, we believe that um, the comparison website can show the individual um, their, um, uh, show the, 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 the consumer um, their relative positioning with respect to a relevant market segment based on their transaction history. Isn't it good to be compared, for example, to your fellow shopaholics? You get me? So, um, and the consumer has uh, the, the possibility to change um, the option to compare himself with a, relevant, a more relevant market segment. In addition, we all know that the paradox of choice is also a problem in choosing um, an option, right? So now, we believe that by true filtered options, the consumer can now be shown by top three or top three recommendations based on their individual transaction records. Another problem, we all know that individual account or mentally account for sunk cost, a cost that has been done before a long time ago or yeah, so now, how do we solve that problem? Because it overestimates the, the, the cost or the, the switching cost. Let's visualize the benefits. Visualizing the benefits could lead to, a, um, to, to focus on the benefits. So we believe that this could be the solution for switching. We think this idea is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Yep. <laughs> I love the idea of risk ratings, but who will do them? And how do we make sure that uh, we can trust these? Yep, so we're recommending the government do it. I'll show you, in general, it's a feature of the data dashboard. So when people actually interact with those apps, we're suggesting a marketplace which would run through MyGov or something similar. So as part of the apps when they're recommended to you, they would have a rating, and it's based on a set of standard criteria, much like the film and literature classifications. And so the reasons we're suggesting this, because we're also aware that's a significant cost to the government on top of what has been proposed, is a large part of it is that we all saw that 20 second video, it was painful. We need people to have a positive first experience, otherwise there'll be a high rate of attrition, people won't come back. As many other groups have said, it's also easy to adopt because people trust the MyGov platform, they're already familiar with it. Um, but this marketplace one, the other thing I want to add about that is that it prevents people from having to give a separate consent through every single service provider and every product they have to share that data. It's all managed from one place in the middle. So a lot of those features, I think, are necessary for the success of open banking. It also allows for the ACCC to monitor those transactions so they can monitor for any unusual or fraudulent requests or um, compliance monitoring for the providers.